Hello and welcome. One of the things I most enjoy is taking random bits of historical data and organizing them together, hopefully to come to a deeper understanding of a particular subject. One of the most logical ways of doing this is to line up events in chronological order. One day I did this with an assortment of happenings in Morihei Ueshiba's life for the year 1922. Here's what I found. This was an important year in Morihei's journey. He was living in Ayabe near Kyoto among the community of Omoto believers under the spiritual guidance of Onisaburo Deguchi. His only surviving son, Kishomaru, named by Onisaburo, was a one-year-old toddler. Morihei had opened his first dojo, the Ueshiba Juku, in his home the previous year. There he taught the Daitoryu Jujitsu he learned from Sokaku Takeda in Hokkaido. Morihei's dojo was filled with Omoto followers and naval officers from a nearby port city who came to practice under the dynamic Ueshiba. Oni Saburo was fond of goading strong martial artists who visited Ayabe to test Morihei's skills. This home dojo thrived in an energy-charged atmosphere. Then a most extraordinary thing occurred. Morihei's jiu-jitsu teacher, Sokaku Takeda, arrived in Ayabe with his wife and children to stay for six months in the Ueshiba home. It was unprecedented for Sokaku to do such a thing and this reveals the close bond between master and student that existed at that time. The Ueshiba family insists that Takeda arrived uninvited. The Takeda family claims that Morihei did invite Sokaku and mentions a correspondence between the two men. The particulars of this event remain a mystery. What happened while Sokaku was in Ayabe? We assume that he took over much of the teaching responsibilities. Sokaku also carefully observed certain changes that Morihei had introduced to some of the techniques. This became a bone of contention. The story goes that Sokaku insisted that Morihei adopt a different name for what he was teaching. The decision was reached to henceforth call Morihei's art Daitoryu Aiki Jujutsu. The odd thing is that Sokaku too began to use that term almost exclusively from that point forward. We really know little about what happened and are left to speculate. One thing there is concrete proof of is that Sokaku's stay lasted six months. At the end of this period, Morihei was awarded the Kyoju Daidi Scroll, which certified him as an instructor of Daitoryu, qualified to teach the art as Sokaku's representative. This would prove to be a turning point in the relationship between the two men and was a key factor in the later establishment of Aikido in 1942. Thank you for allowing me to share my enthusiasm for these historical matters involving the creation of our art. Some people find history fascinating, others care little for their antecedents. I can assure you that if you exert the effort to inform yourself about the art's origins, it will make your practice much more satisfying and insightful and help you grasp Morihei's vision. This will in turn reflect positively on your Aikido skills and your ability to communicate the essence of the art to others. For Aikido Journal, I'm Stanley Pranin.